All right. And once we're familiar how we can add styles using external style sheet, now let's take a look how we can add CSS in our JSX. And effectively, we just need to pick the element we want to apply our styles to. And then we need to go with style attribute. And we need to set it equal to the curly braces. And essentially, these curly braces just mean that we're going back to the JavaScript plan. And we'll discuss them in more detail in one of the following videos when we cover the rules of JSX, basically when we cover how we can add JavaScript to JSX. For now, just focus that you need to provide the curly braces. And then inside of it, we need to provide a JavaScript object. So please don't think that it's some kind of special React syntax where you need to go with these double curlies. No. Effectively, since we need to provide the object here, that's why you have this result. We always start with one curly braces. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how we essentially can just pass the reference to the object. Now, one gotcha about the object is that it's a JavaScript object. And what that means is that if you have a CSS property that has the hyphen, you'll have to capitalize. And as far as the values, they'll have to be here as a string. So let's try it out here. I'm going to save. Let's navigate to index.js and let's look for that heading four. So, like I said, we go here with style. Notice automatically it's set up with the curly braces. And here we provide that JavaScript object. So, let's start here with color. And as far as the value, again, key value pairs. And then the values are as strings. So, hashtag 617. And we want to go with D98. Then we want to go with font size. So let's add a comma, not a semicolon. We go with font size, and that is equal to, again, quotation marks, 0 0.75 REMs. By the way, it looks like in the readme, I'm missing the REM part. So of course, in your case, that's not going to be the case anymore. So let me save here. And then we're looking for a third one, and that is going to be margin. And again, we are not going with margin hyphen top. We go here with margin top, and we want to set it equal to 0 0.5 REMs. Let's save it. As you can see, the styles were applied. But one gotcha we need to be aware of, I guess one more gotcha we need to be aware of. At the end of the day, these are inline styles. So what that means, general CSS rules apply. So what am I talking about? Well, if let's say you'll try to select the same heading four in CSS and try to change the properties that we already set up over here with the inline one, it's not going to work. So letter spacing, yeah, it's going to work since we don't have it over here. But as far as the color, if I try to go with red, it's not going to work. And in order to speed this up, I'm just going to copy. So we're going to go over here, copy and paste and notice. Yeah, the letter spacing changed, but not the color. Now, why am I telling you that is because later, as you're progressing with react, you'll most likely start working with external libraries. I don't know, maybe a slider library or a modal library, whatever. And one thing to be aware of, those libraries do use inline styles here and there, some quite often, some less. So keep in mind, if you'll want to change some styles that the library provides, sometimes it's not going to be enough to just go to the CSS and change it. If the library is using inline styles, you'll have to figure out how you can modify those inline styles and only then you will be successful. So don't get frustrated if you install the library and you try to add your own styles, but it's not working. Always, always first check the elements. And if you see the inline styles, you know that you'll have to do more work. And lastly, I just want to mention that yes, there is an alternative. Remember, we're providing here a object. Now, we're writing JavaScript, correct? 
So what we can do? Well, we can create one. And we can create the object here. We can create it outside of the component. That doesn't really matter. And we can just provide the reference. Notice how the values don't change. Values exactly are the same. The only difference is that now instead of passing that object directly, we just set up the reference. So let's try it out. I'm going to go to index.js. And this is the case where if you have, of course, the implicit return, you will have to refactor to explicit, since I'm going to be setting up this object over here. So you won't be able to do that with a title. But since the author is right away set up as a explicit, I'm good to go. So let me go here and set up that long name. So const, and then inline heading styles, and that is equal to my object. And effectively, I'll just cut it out here. I'll cut it out here, copy and paste. And then we go with inline heading styles. Now the reason why I'm showing you that is because again, if you'll work with someone else's code, you might see either of these solutions. You might see the object passed in directly, or you might see them separately. And basically, this is the point that I want to make in this video. For the most part, there are multiple approaches available. So there is no right or wrong. If your preference is to set up the objects and pass them in this way, go ahead and do that. If not, if you want to pass them directly in the code, that's also an option. As long as the result is the same, it really comes down to your preference. Now, why we won't use the inline styles in this course, because if you ever work with inline styles, you know that they're somewhat of a pain. So yes, it's a good solution here and there, but in general, you'll want to stick with external style sheet, maybe some CSS libraries and all that, because adding styles, of course, one by one to each element is somewhat painful. But please be aware of this option, because you might see that in someone else's code.